The term only in this context means that no other entity, including the Republic of China, the ROC in Taiwan, has the authority to represent China internationally. That's it. That's all we have to send to Nikki Haley, to Bonnie Glazer, to any of these people. Former South Carolina governor Nikki Haley, who also goes by the name Nirata Randawa, her Indian name, has made recently some headlines during her visit to Taiwan. She is challenging China's claim to Taiwan, asserting that the UN Resolution 2758 doesn't explicitly mention Taiwan. She has advocated for Taiwan's inclusion in international organizations like the United Nations and the World Health Organization. This stance aligns actually with another recent development. Australian Senate um, passed a motion led by Senators David Fawcett and Deborah O'Neill, um, which reject Beijing's interpretation of Resolution 2758 regarding Taiwan's status under international law. This is something that is taking place recently. Think tanks and other experts like this lady, Bonnie Glaser, they've been pushing this idea um, and asking for similar actions. Some of them have even suggested that the U.S. should unilaterally recognize Taiwan and uh, start up an establishing re diplomatic relations with the island, which would force then China to either choose between maintaining ties and relationship with the U.S. or sever them. They argue <laughs> that Resolution 2758 didn't definitely establish Taiwan as part of China. So today I want to talk about that. And um, even though we're not going to go word by word. So let's examine the first sentence of the resolution, right? It says right there, to restore all the rights to the People's Republic of China, the PRC. Now, the word restore implies returning something to its rightful owner. Now, in the context of the United Nations proposing to return all rights to the PRC, explicitly recognizes that the PRC has territorial rights. Yes, it's all rights. So that includes acknowledging sovereignty over Taiwan. Now, those people that we just talked about that advocate for Taiwan's inclusion in international organizations argue apparently that all rights in the UN resolution doesn't encompass territorial rights. It only suggests that this resolution gives China the right to a seat at the United Nations, not sovereignty over Taiwan. These very highly paid, highly educated individuals are basically engaging in a, in a, in a game of words, in a semantic debate about the meaning of all rights within the context of international relations. You and me, we understand that they're trying to <laughs> put a blind over our eyes. Now, however, for me, the most crucial phrase in the resolution is where it says here, it's the only lawful representative of China. This is where I think the real debate starts. Because if you remember, at the date of the resolution, two Chinas existed. There was the People's Republic of China and there was the Republic of China. Mao Zedong had established the PRC after World War II and the defeated nationalists had retreated to the island of Taiwan, territory of China, and formed the ROC over there. Both governments at the time claimed that they were the legitimate representatives of this territory referred to as China, each insisting that they were the one and only China. Yeah? So with this United Nations decision to restore all rights to the PRC, China became the PRC. This is what gave birth to one China, of which Taiwan, with its ROC government, is part of. <laughs> It isn't any more clear than that. Disappointed and defeated as he was, George Bush, who was the ambassador to the United Nations 
for America at the time, went on in his professional career to become the director of the CIA, and it was there that he saw in 1979 President Jimmy Carter unilaterally terminating a defense treaty with the ROC and severing diplomatic relations with the island of Taiwan. Carter, in the community case, recognized that the government of the People's Republic of China is the sole legal government of China. Again, nobody's talking about two Chinas. China. One China. Some say, and I would agree, that it was Bush's humiliation and the defeat at the United Nations that actually led to the failed color revolution that he attempted in Beijing in 1989 when he was president of the United States. Fast forward to 2024 and we see again this terrorist, murderous, hegemonic American regime attempting to renege on its words. To talk a little bit about the second part of the video, as I said at the beginning, it is important to consider the potential consequences of the United States establishing formal diplomatic ties with Taiwan, like basically what Nikki is suggesting, what Bonnie Glazer is suggesting, what a lot of these institutes in the West are suggesting. The, the, the simple matter is that a move like this would be a direct violation of the, the, the China policy that was outlined in 1972, but also 1971 UN resolution. Let's, let's have a look here. Again, the text is on the screen. Yeah. The term only in this context means that no other entity, including the Republic of China, the ROC in Taiwan, has the authority to represent China internationally. That's it. That's all we have to send to Nikki Haley, to Bonnie Glazer, to any of these people. There is no including those ROC members into the United Nations or the WHO or anything else that requires diplomatic relations. Why? Because there's only one China. In the letters, in the writing, it only says China, the territory of China. Two came to the United Nations and they asserted there is one China and the PRC is the government of China. It never talks about two Chinas, is it? After this was passed. Um, so this text right here is telling us that any other entity the claims to represent China will be acting illegally. But then let's ask ourselves, who is that other entity? The United Nations again in 1971 gave us a pretty clear answer when they decided to expel the representatives of Chiang Kai-shek. So the question for those people out there who are doubting the legitimacy of the PRC is quite simple. Who was Chiang Kai-shek leading at the time? Was he the leader of Hawaii? Was he the leader of Timbuktu? For those down under, was Chiang Kai-shek the leader of Tasmania? Of course, the answer is no. Chiang Kai-shek was the leader of the Republic of China, ROC, one of the Chinas that came before the United Nations and one of the Chinas that was absorbed by the PRC as one China. They had previously controlled mainland, but they had been defeated by the Communist Party and they were forced to retreat to Taiwan. So by expelling ROC's representatives from the United Nations, the international community is recognizing that the PRC is the sole legitimate government of China. Both the ROC and the PRC became what is referred to as China. When people talk about China in these documents, they're talking about one China. This, this is a decision that has been reaffirmed and confirmed by countless countries, countless international organizations, 
since 1971. So this is not going to happen. The United States is not going to establish formal diplomatic ties with Taiwan. This is just theatrics and noise and politics in the middle of an election year, yeah, where a lot of these warmongers, they want to be part of the government whenever you get elected. But everybody understands what an idiot action it would be to, to, to try and sever <laughs> diplomatic relations with China and, and, and establish diplomatic relations with Taiwan. It would have enormous consequences for, for global stability because without a doubt, without a doubt, China would respond with economic sanctions, military actions, and perhaps even an armed conflict. Also, you got to understand that nowadays there are many countries that have close ties with China. They would likely align with Beijing as well, and they would further distance themselves from the United States. I mean, nobody wants to do that, but if you're pushing, that's what they'll do. There'll be a major crisis in the Taiwan Strait were that to happen. That would disrupt global supply chains around the world, financial markets. And in essence, the entire international stability will be lost if that happens. So uh, perhaps the one country that would suffer the most would be the United States because they have become so heavily reliant on imports of goods and intermediate goods as well to manufacture other things on China. And you got to remember that this is something that they did out of their own volition. They were the ones who decided to financialize their economy. Their GDP is mostly services. They really don't make much in America. And well, this same repercussions would apply to any country supporting the United States and trying to establish formal diplomatic ties with Taiwan. And one last thing is that the PRC would likely move ahead and implement a blockade to the island of Taiwan, which would actually escalate tensions in the region and increase the risk of military confrontation between two nuclear powers. There is no doubt in my mind that this scenario would be catastrophic for the world. There is, therefore, an unlikely chance that the United States will establish formal diplomatic ties with Taiwan. This is, there are other ways, less risky strategies to continue to salamislice the Taiwan question at the hands of the US. The world simply cannot afford to lose access to Chinese supply chains. So that's a, that's a blessing in disguise. But it's important to remember that the narrative that is being pushed out there is that China's military buildup is to attack Taiwan. People on the ground, people in Taiwan understand that that isn't so. That's what they're being told, but they understand that those weapons are there to target all the weapons that America is placing around China. It's not for the Taiwanese people is not for the Taiwanese people, it's for those around China who are waiting for the spark to happen. So it's up to them, is the decision. So let's wrap up this video by reminding you the two things that we need to tell these people like Nikki Haley and Bonnie Glazer and all these think tanks. Two Chinas came before the United Nations in 1971, and the United Nations settled by recognizing only one, the whole territory, one China. Ask them, what happened to the other China then? It was absorbed. <laughs> it is an unresolved civil war. Still, it's the same territory. The ROC claimed it back in 1971, the PRC claimed it since 1949. Same territory. We're asked them, yeah, who was Chiang Kai-shek representing when he was expelled from the United Nations? Was he representing 
anything else other than Taiwan? Of course not. So yeah, Taiwan was not mentioned in the resolution, but Chiang Kai-shek, the leader of Taiwan, was mentioned. Hmm. That ought to do it, right? All right, guys, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. And as always, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And if you like the content on my channel, consider subscribing. And until I see you again, take it easy and bye for now.